I think it's been really positive. I think that that you know most coaches, anytime you can get more time with your athletes, they're gonna be really excited about it. I think we found a really good um, balance point between overkill and and you know having a steady steady progression. Um, you know, giving them days off and and, and things like that. So I think the the way the new scheduling works is great for a more balanced approach to the preseason. In the past, you, you know, you got your your six out of seven days, and you had to have those consecutive weeks and. I think it made people overtrain a little bit more, uh, not just coaches and what they're planning for their athletes, but also the athletes feeling that kind of sense of day-to-day -day pressure. So I think it's really good for us. We were able to get into um, more event specifics earlier this year. And so people have gotten more repetitions in their in their event specific stuff. So I think it's been really good, really good experience so far. I always go back to kind of the, the, the coach small cliche. That I always talk to kids about rituals and routines. Like you're only as good as the quality of your rituals and routines. And if you can keep those going through the cross country season into the indoor track season, um, you know, having a good sense of, of, uh, of discipline about, you know, overdoing it, underdoing it, those sort of things, that's that's everything. I think it's, it really is a matter of being uh, great with your self-discipline and doing the right things, the little things. Um, and I think we have a lot of great athletes on the team, um, both returners from last year and, and some newcomers who, who see that, they see the big picture and are able to to do those things on a regular basis to get better and you know are good about their sleep hygiene are good about their nutrition and and that's super encouraging for us as coaches because you know we don't have them but you know 90 minutes to two hours when we when we are with them for training and the rest of the time is theirs and they they can do whatever they want with it and, and you know knowing that a lot of them are doing a good job outside of that time is, is really encouraging for the season for sure i don't think there's there's enough words to say um you know, I, I've, I've never had somebody to work with day to day and who, who you know, when we we're going through the hiring process. I, I kept saying, I want somebody who I can trust to do anything that I can do and then some. And, and she's really delivered on that on all fronts. And um, I think she's building a great rapport with her event groups and with the student athletes in general. And those things are so precious to, to advancing your program. So um, I'm very spoiled with what she's been doing so far. And, I think what it's it's going to amount to, you'll see it in, in results. I think that when athletes feel that there's a designated person who's very invested in their day-to-day -day life and, and training, uh, it makes everybody better. Uh, you know, there's, there's a reason why Division One programs have you know eight full-time coaches, and, and you see those results are are mirrored in that. Uh, I think you're going to see quite a bit of, of improvement on 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 all sides of our roster just with that presence, uh, you know, being there on a day-to-day -day basis for sure. I think on the men's side, I think we're really well balanced. I think we've got athletes across the board that have, have uh, ability to contribute uh, in their event groups. Um, I think there's definitely a, a contingent right now in men's sprinting that's going to be pretty tough throughout the year. Uh, it's going to be very competitive to make relays this year on that side. Um, and on the women's side, there's a lot of high-end talent that's that's been performing really well coming out of last season and then out through cross, cross country this past fall. Um, and so what I hope happens there is that some of the younger female athletes are, are seeing those successes and, uh, and, and putting a lot of, of, like I said before, good self-discipline and routines and rituals because uh, those people who are doing so well on the women's side of it, um, they're not freak athletes, genetically gifted types, they're workers, man. They've put in the effort, they're consistent with it. Uh, I think people should, should aspire to that, that if they, if they give it that much of their life, then they will see those rewards come back to them. Uh, but either way, on both sides, I'm really excited. I think there's there's a lot to, a lot of exciting things happening in practices right now. Um, and obviously, you guys saw the cross country seasons, and and uh, I think those things are gonna gonna you know snowball into indoor and have a really good season. I think it'll be pretty immediate. Um, the people, the people that that again, this goes back to the, the the little things. They they love track. I mean, if you're if you're waking up every day at six in the morning to get there and get your work in you can't just have track be a hobby you've got to be pretty serious about it and i think that that's that's kind of the the, the you know uh, launch pad piece of this that, they, that everybody's very committed to it and so over time those repetitions grow and and, and as that that volume of repetition quality repetition increases you'll start to see those things reflected in performance and i think it's been really good with the freshman group first year types uh, like you said people who are new to track and field in general um, if they don't know anything else, then then this is where they're they're you know, kind of grounding themselves in their mentality about training, and I think that's really good for them moving forward. It, it's they they're a, 
putting their mind to a system and letting themselves get those good repetitions and you know taking days where they need to to, to you know handle self-care elements and whatnot um, I think that only plays well into the into the grand scheme of performance for them I'm gonna say the, the easy one UAAs are at NYU this year at the Armory I think that every time that we come into that venue um, in the UA championship cycle you're talking about a place that hosts some pretty big professional meets. Um, the atmosphere is electric. It's, it's almost like the acoustics of the building make every cheer twice as loud. Um, you know, bank 200 meter oval, so people tend to hit, hit some good marks on it when they're there. And that encourages, like throughout the meet, as people are PRing one after another, it has a tendency to carry a lot of momentum. So um, I don't think you can get better than that in terms of atmosphere and environment. You know, when you've got your conference, your league championship on the line, that sort of thing. Uh, that's probably my number one and, and uh, I don't even know if there's a close second to be honest with you.